Okay. We're in the back cave. You guys ready? Yeah. Where, where, where are the bats at? Ah. Hey, today is a very special day. We're leaving Beckway. Hey, that all rhymed. <laughs> uh, we're on our way to St. Lucia, but halfway between, well not halfway between, but on the way we're gonna stop through St. Vincent on the coast and we're gonna dive the Bat Cave. Woo! It's about 11 miles from here. We're gonna dive the Bat Cave and then we're gonna do an overnight sail to St. Lucia. Where is the Bat Cave? Uh, on the southwest corner of St. Vincent. It's a, uh, I don't really know, it's, it's a, a cave that cuts through a peninsula and you can dive down into it and there's bats above you and then you scuba dive down the, the backside and it goes down super deep. Cute, man. Yeah. What's going on? I don't know, something's wrong with the rudder. It's not giving any power or? No, it won't turn. Oh, wow. Wait. What's wrong? I was stupid. The autopilot got was on. Of course it wouldn't turn. <laughs> Sorry, false alarm. <laughs> oh my gosh. What the hell? I already have my mask on already. I was jumping in. <laughs> I was like, it really, it really felt like something was stuck in the yeah. head. Somebody give Brian another coffee. <laughs> Sailing a catch 101? Yeah. Imagine that you're in a car, right? Uh -huh. Let's say that you just get into your car and you're not going anywhere. Let's say there's there's 10 knots of wind blowing towards you. Yeah. You can sort of feel that. That's the true wind. Yeah. But if the car is moving forward at let's say, you know, 40 miles per hour and you stick your hand out the window, it's like crazy. Yeah. Because the car is moving, so the apparent wind feels more. Yeah. Well, it's the same thing on a sailboat, so, you know, the wind is 20 knots, but right now we're moving forward at, you know, let's say 8 knots. So, instead of it being a true 20 knots, the apparent wind is like 25 knots or something, because we're creating yeah. more wind for ourselves. And it also changes the angle of the wind. And then, so obviously if you're downwind, it's the opposite, like the faster yeah. you go, like your It takes away from it, less, so right? it could be blowing 30 knots. But if you're going downwind at 10 knots, then it feels like you have 20 knots of wind, right? So the idea with sailing upwind is to point the boat as high into the wind as possible while still maintaining good speed and keeping the boat comfortable for everybody on board. And in these conditions that we're seeing right now, which is some fairly moderate seas and about 20 knots of apparent breeze, we usually target like 40 to sometimes 45 degrees apparent, depending on how fast we want to go and how big the waves are. And what we're actually gonna do is we're gonna focus on trimming the sails so that the sails are balanced and 
we can move through the water without needing to turn the rudder too much because if we're using a lot of rudder, that's creating drag and is actually gonna slow us down quite a bit. So by balancing the sails, we can almost sort of steer Delos without using the rudder, which is pretty cool. So right now the sails are trimmed pretty good for uh, sailing up wind. We don't have a lot of lee or, or weather helm or anything. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna screw up the trim and I want you to tell me how that feels on the wheel, like if you can feel a difference when I over trim the boat. So now the boat, she wants to round up, right? Because yeah. we've created basically a huge weather vane. Now the boat wants to do this. So now you have to, you know, steer to port yeah. to keep us from going too high. So now we're and two bars, three bars, bars yeah. and sometimes if it gets really bad, you can have a lot of rudder. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna ease the sails to keep us like trimmed and balanced. Okay. So I'll fix it back again. I think in general people over trim the sails. How does it feel? It feels good. When I watch Brian, like he'll just be sitting here and he'll just kind of instantly know like, okay, we need to ease that or trim that. And for me, it's like there's so many factors that you kind of have to balance all out. Like you're thinking about what's my wind direction? Is the wind changing? And, and hand steering at the same time and trying to keep your course. Like it's a lot to process and I'm sure in time it just becomes more of a feel. But like for me, I'm like checking all these instruments and I'm like, oh shit, like I'm going too far to starboard or now the wind's coming around this way, and and uh, yeah, it's cool though. Like it's fun to learn for sure. We're gonna anchor, or are we just gonna like drift it? Uh, we should go over and take a look at some of these moorings and see if they're capable of holding those. Okay. Because that would be the easiest thing. This is a mooring, but it's too shallow. Um, the other ones are all die, or all lobster pops, so I think we'll just hover around. Okay. Copy that. Conditions are calm, so I think it's high. Copy that, sounds good. Alright, back cave dive plan. What we're gonna do is we're going to pull Delos up as close as we can. You guys are gonna jump off the back, surface swim into the cave. The cave looks big, but then it contracts down to about four feet. Swim at the surface as long as you can. You're gonna have bats going over your head, supposedly. And then when you can't uh, go any further, then you're gonna dip underwater and then you're gonna be in the crack. Keep going until the bottom drops out. It should be about 40 feet to the other side of the cave. And then you're gonna make a left-hand turn. You're gonna dive along the wall and then you should be popping up right around the same spot where you got dropped. There's our dive plan. Okay. Don't get swept away by some bats, little Kaza. Okay. <laughs> Don't get bit by a bat. Bit. Everybody have their tetanus shots.
diving off of your home, pulling up to this crazy cliff face and just dropping people in the water. It's a good it's a good Sunday, or Monday, or whatever the f*** <laughs> is. Oh, it was freaking cool, man! It was awesome! It was awesome. I don't know, impoundable imagine! Yes, I'm so excited! Yeah. Basket like, inside is quite surgy. But if you don't fight it, it's fine. Yeah. Just sort of sit there. And cool. a bunch really of bats cool. fly around you and like, oh. poop on you. <laughs> yes. Did you get pooped on? Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Let's do it, man. <laughs> was it amazing? Yeah, it was really cool. Oh, you so guys will like. There's so many bats. Wait, it's crazy. Look at these conditions. Yeah. So freaking calm. The dive gods are smiling on us today. Thank sure. you. Praise you, dive god. dives in one. Yeah. <laughs> Towards the end, we're over here. We found like this crazy mini wall that drops to 20 meters and it has like these caves and swim throughs and uh, the what? biggest school of mini reef fish I've ever seen in my life. 
Cool. Thousands and thousands of them. Yeah, that, that was an incredible dive. I think today could be one of the most magical days of my life. That dive was incredible. And now, there's a rainbow. Oh my God. Woo Look at this. Woo. St. Vincent, you beauty. That's beautiful. It's a good end to a perfect day. Yesterday I said that yesterday was my favorite day. This is my new favorite day. <laughs> Let's see what tomorrow brings. So quiet. We have 44 miles to go to St. Lucia. And we have 13 hours. So we need to go very slow, which is really nice. It's so peaceful out here right now. There's like almost no wind, light little swell, rainbow, dolphins, and it's just quiet. It's very calming. miles to the top of the island so I think we can maybe just we were totally ran out of wind the wind started coming from all over the place at one to two knots so maybe we'll just idle take our time take a few hours to get to the end of the island and then we'll try and sail as slow as possible because we only have about 45 miles to go and we don't want to get there too soon so that's it Senor's looking up something real nice. Yeah. Yeah, we're doing Mexican. <laughs> You're up first, though. <laughs> Look at this. Fresh guac, olives, jalapenos, street taco sauce, and Brady's world Spinach, famous beans. Cheese, beans. So me and Kazatron got the first watch of the evening, and to say that it's smooth would be a severe understatement. But it is beautiful out here. We just passed this little, kind of looked like a canyon, and you could see that it was raining down in there. And all of a sudden we got kind of a, a land breeze of this, not like I said cold, but chillier than the normal wind. And you could just smell the earth because of the rain and yeah just a breath of fresh air and you can just tell that St. Vincent is very raw like that. So it is like 8.45 I just started my watch and we're coming to the end of the St. Vincent Island. Um, I can see the lights of St. Lucia in the distance. a bit rolly. The swells are hitting us like right from the side so kind of like lurching forward and then rocking to the side and lurching forward and rocking to the side. Taz is going on watch. She's going to tack when she feels like it's appropriate. 
and maybe hand steer. It's just that the autopilot doesn't drive as good as you, upwind especially. So if you put it on the autopilot, we don't point as high as we could if you're not driving by hand because you can just react more quickly. How far away are we? Uh, from the island, straight line distance from where we want to go, we are 10... 0.8 miles, but it wouldn't surprise me if we had to sail 20 miles to get there with the wind being like it is. It's pretty much coming straight from where we want to go. to Soufriere, um, but the sun is just coming up, which is very nice, lets me breathe a little bit easier because uh, anytime that we're near land and it's dark, and especially if we're approaching land, it's always just a little nervy, checking radar, just like checking for lights, um, just in case there's any local fishing boats out here, but we're going to arrive there perfect timing. And hopefully we get an amazing sunrise over the pitons. So fingers crossed. Next up on Delos, we make some local friends. Oh, little fizz. Yeah. Little fizz. Yeah. Nice to meet you, man. Yeah, man. The girls have a girls' day. And we sail to the nature island of the Caribbean, Dominica. Hand me a flathead screwdriver. Yes. And this one? <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh dang it. <laughs> You're a mess, Brian. I dropped my ham and my sunglasses. Jeez. But we're sailing into the sunset. Oh, it's alright. We should go dive right there. Business in the front, party in the back. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> like it? I like it a lot. 